So ladies and gentlemen, please continue with your meals. Um, no U.S. government agency has a more important mission for our combat veterans than the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency. DPAA does many missions and makes many connections around the world that we may not even be aware of, all to ensure that they carry out their sacred mission to account for all missing and fallen veterans. Before, and uh, Director Kelly McKeague is certainly the right leader for DPAA. Before retiring as an Air Force Major General, he served as the commander of the Joint POW-MIA Accounting Command in Hawaii. Woohoo! All right. And was the first Deputy Director of DPAA. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Director McKeague. Sir, it is truly an honor. Thank you. Minister Park, Minister Yu, Ambassador Stevens, General Brooks, General Zhang, distinguished veterans, ladies and gentlemen, warm greetings to each of you. It is a privilege to be able to share with you in this, and be a small part of this Alliance Peace Conference and your reunion. This, memorial's, this morning's memorial rededication, as Minister Park talked about, was an incredibly powerful way to rightfully honor the service and sacrifice of the over 36,000 Americans and over 7,000 Katusas. Although the fighting came to an end this day 69 years ago, we should all be mindful and thankful that the ironclad alliance between the United States of America and the Republic of Korea was tragically, but bravely, forged in blood over the course of three years. In the skies over Suwon, in the waters of Incheon, and in the fields of Chosen. The heroic service and sacrifice of the troops of the 22 nations who steadfastly and valiantly fought together has been the cornerstone of the peace, stability, security, and prosperity that blesses the Republic of Korea and its citizens. I never had the privilege of being assigned for duty on the Korean Peninsula, but my father did. As a 21-year-old Army private, he deployed with the 25th Infantry Division in November 1950. He saw his first combat near Kaesong. He was older than most of his peers because he was denied entry into the Army, not once, but twice, because of a severe leg injury he obtained at the age of 13 when he was run over by a truck. My father was very proud of his service in Korea, but whenever he talked about it, he would always mention how he froze and how he missed his Hawaii home. Within this nation's sacred obligation and global effort to search for, recover, and identify Americans from past wars, there are more than 7,500 MIAs from the Korean War. And while the number of missing is daunting, each has a unique story. With memories and uncertainty that transcends generations. This is why for the families of the missing, they still grieve the loss of their loved one and fervently wait for answers. So, against the backdrop of the KDVA motto, Together for the Rock us Alliance, I would like to share with you some brief insights that may not be familiar to you. In searching for and recovering fallen service members to their families, no other nations in the world, in the world, do it with the degree of talent, dedication, and passion as does the United States and the Republic of Korea. In fact, this partnership has grown over 30 years. It itself is reflective of our shared values and it's emblematic of our ironclad alliance. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, DPAA's collaboration with the Ministry of National Defense for KIA recovery 
and identification, better known as MACRI, gets stronger each year because it is accomplished together for the Alliance. There are frequent scientific exchanges, coordination on research, and joint investigations and recoveries. In implementing the 2018 Comprehensive Military Agreement with the DPRK, the ROC is in the fourth year of the successful recovery of remains from their side of the DMZ. So leveraging this work, DPAA conducted its first, its very first joint investigation in the, deep, in the DMZ with our MACRI partners this past spring. And next summer, we will work with MACRI on a joint excavation within the DMZ for the very first time. You'll recall that in 2018, the DPRK turned over 55 boxes of remains within which are not 55 individuals, as the DPRK told us, but there are over 250 individuals. To date, we have identified 82 Americans and repatriated 87 to the Republic of Korea. From these boxes together, DPA and MACRI have brought answers, long sought answers to families. I'd like to share with you two such stories. U.S. Army Sergeant Roy DeLauder was a member of the 7th Infantry Division. He was 21 years old when he was killed and declared missing from the Battle of the Chosen Reservoir in December 1950. This past January, we identified him from the remains in boxes number 27 and number 41. On April 19th, the day Buddy, which was he affectionately referred to by his family, the day Buddy would have turned 93 years old, his three sisters, all in their 90s, and two daughters, who were three years old and two years old when their father went missing, buried him with full military honors at the family cemetery next to his parents in Hagerstown, Maryland. Then, this is a great story, from the remains in box number 52, Macri was able to identify Rock Army Private Kim, who was also lost at the Chosen. At the very first ever joint repatriation ceremony in the United States last September, the U.S. and Rock respectively exchanged 68 and six sets of remains. One of the most enduring sights from that ceremony was a second lieutenant standing next to Rock President Moon as they watched a small transfer case get flagged, draped with the flag of the Republic of Korea. Second Lieutenant Kim hai Su, a nurse in the Rock Army, was with her great-grandfather for the very first time. She then carried his remains up the steps of Code 1, the President's aircraft, so they both could return to their homeland in Seoul. So here you have a sergeant and a private from very different cultures, separated by a great geographic distance, serving in their nation's army. Together, they answered the call to arms for the same noble cause and made the same supreme sacrifice on the same battlefield. And together, their families shared the same shadows of grief and uncertainty for over seven decades. But also the sheer joy when their country was able to provide them some comfort. Distinguished veterans, ladies and gentlemen, although the work to find, recover, and identify missing U.S. and ROC service members is challenging and complex, it is also a moral imperative. Citizens of both nations understand this, and they appreciate the supreme sacrifice made by our unreturned heroes and the answers owed to their families. 
the fact that the United States of America and the Republic of Korea vigorously pursue their missing is the right thing to do. We are fulfilling a promise made to those who we sent off to combat and never returned, as well as to their families. It's a shared national commitment that also serves as a marker to veterans whose comrades in arms are still missing, and to those in uniform today that our nations will not leave their warriors behind. Critics of the Korean War will point to the catastrophic toll and unimaginable horrors inflicted, the five million casualties, half of whom were civilians, cities and towns laid in utter ruin, and a stridently divided Korea. At the same time, Korean War veterans, families of the missing, and even Sergeant DeLauder and Private Kim would disagree vehemently. And while the armistice never technically ended the Korean War, the war's legacy is very much apparent today. First, the U.S. Rock Alliance is stronger and contributes to security and stability not just south of the DMZ, but also regionally and globally. Second, the democracy that is the hallmark of the Republic of Korea serves as a vibrant exemplar to the Indo-Pacific region and, in fact, the world. But most extraordinarily is the economic powerhouse the Republic of Korea is today. And while the aftermath of the war was marked by economic challenges and setbacks, the talented and resolute South Korean people embraced education and technical training to then contribute to the South Korean miracle. Inscribed above our laboratory entrance are these words that came from then Vice President Calvin Coolidge, who in 1920, shortly after World War I, said this, the nation that forgets its defenders will itself be forgotten. The nation that forgets its defenders will itself be forgotten. Thank you to the Korea Veteran Defense Veterans Association and the Korea-U.S. Alliance Foundation for not forgetting. May God's grace be upon all our Korean War veterans, including those who have not returned and their families. And may it continue to abundantly bless the United States of America and the Republic of Korea. Kachi Kapjida.